Welcome to another episode of Shock and Awe Toy Reviews. Some idiots, a toy, camera, and a review. I am Toast, joined by Berg this evening. Hello. Uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at Bandai's movie realization Star Wars Ronan Mando. And Mandalorian, sorry. Mando. Uh, that's the box. Don't care about the box. Here's the toy. I don't know if anyone noticed this, but uh, for many, many years now, Bandai has been making their movie realization line of Star Wars figures, which is basically Star Wars ninjas and samurais and... Like Feudal Japan. Feudal Japan. Star Wars, there's some Marvel characters. Yes. And they're somewhat expensive, somewhat crazy awesome, and somehow my Facebook page my Instagram page and my email just kept getting spammed by this guy because uh, he, he's awesome and he wanted to come live in my house. <laughs> Do you have any of the others? I have none of the others Okay. because I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. And now I'm going to fight the urge to go down that rabbit hole every time because uh, they're expensive and there's tons of them of them I broke and I got him I think this is a good one to break on yeah as usual we'll take a look at the uh, some sculpting and painting just overall yeah. this guy's gorgeous I can't believe how good this guy is and so this is the first one that I've seen too and I saw him for the first time just a few minutes ago he is super impressive but I guess we're gonna talk about details yeah uh, so this is a uh, Din Djarin, the Mandalorian from Disney's Mandalorian, and he is a Ronin samurai, whatever the hell that means. Uh, he's masterless. Masterless, yeah, I know. Uh, so we get into the head sculpt, which is just crazy filled with rivets and welds and details and little mm, bolts and all kinds of stuff, and yet is easily recognizable as maybe not the Mandalorian, but at least a Mandalorian Boba Fett type guy. Yes. Uh, the paint on here makes it look like dirty worn metal. Uh, it's, it's, it's great. He's got the same crazy detail in every little ounce uh, all the way down his entire body. There's like thousands of rivets here. There's rivets on this shoulder pad. His little Mando symbols are here. His The uh, string that holds his armor together is detailed uh, on both sides. He actually has the battle damage silver wounds that we were talking about in the original Mandalorian, the Hasbro one. Yeah. Or somebody, maybe how it should look. Yes. He has it. And, you know, he's got the padded arm pieces, his gauntlets just full of crazy detail, and again, also have the little silver highlights of battle damage. Everything has a nice wash on it uh, to give it a dirty, used look. Uh, this side is the same, just crazy amounts of detail. Like, the, the belt has leather marbling or whatever you want to call each little pouch has its own little weathering the back of him has battle damage and dirt like you can see the dirt in his armor up in there got more rivets more paint his shin pads are the this is a we should mention this is pre best car Sure. Yeah. Mandalorian. So I guess maybe they'll eventually do a best car version. Who knows? This is my preferred Mando. Uh, but yeah, the battle damage continues here. Again, this great soiled metal plating paint. And I like the fact that like there's a splot here. Like oh, that part got clean or something or like whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It's it looks very lived in. His pants even have a threaded texture that is just cr 
crazy. And then he's got knee pads, all his little uh, shell casings are picked out. And yeah, it just, the whole figure has tons and tons and tons of detail. It's all brought out with a wash, like we mentioned. Like even his boot has different colors of brown. The only part of his sculpt that I don't like is his cape, which is just a fabric cape. It looks bland compared to everything else. Um, yeah. And even even the the cut along the bottom, it just it just looks like somebody took some scissors. Yeah. Doesn't look purposeful or worn. No. Um, and it, yeah, it totally looks like a pre-programmed worn end of cape cut. Like, yeah. As opposed to a random like this has been tattered because of the wind and sand and all. Right. So it do, it does not fit. The rest of the guy but he's so crazy detailed detailed and painted I'm willing to mostly overlook it I will point out that uh, while it, the elbows are ugly and don't match exactly they, they, they they're close enough that I didn't notice that they don't match until I looked at it you mean the coloring yeah okay it almost looks like a storm collectible elbow it does. Uh, speaking of elbows and knees. Oh. All right. So his head is on a double ball joint at the top of his head. Uh, you can't see it in there. And then he has a ball joint at the bottom of his neck. So he gets all kinds of movement at the top and at the bottom. And unlike certain other toys, at no point does there become a giant gaping hole. Nice. I really, I really appreciate that. Again, a doll, double ball peg system in his shoulder. So he gets the butterfly joint without actually having a butterfly joint. Okay. Uh, and the, these are just tabbed on, so they move out of the way independently. Uh, he's got a bicep swivel because the uh, bicep at Swelf is a softer plastic down here, so he can move his hands. And squeak. Squeaks. Double jointed elbows, so you get like posed. I mentioned it was a Storm Collectibles looking elbow, but it's not, I don't think, as ugly because there's so much sculpt going on that it just, it sort of natural, it, it looks more natural. I'm wondering if he had a, if it was a bare arm, if it would look as ugly as a storm collectibles one yeah I, I bet it would and then he has ball jointed wrists uh, he has a ball jointed lower torso it's a double barbell again that goes one up here and one in there so he gets forward back all kinds of posable posability his uh, waist piece is a separate piece that is loose but sits nice so you can move it and get it out of the way of poses uh, it is a softer plastic so like you can lift his skirt flap up and it won't be in the way he has ball jointed hips he has a swivel thigh and another squeak and another squeak he has double jointed knees that also rotate at the top joint and at do not at the bottom joint, but the top joint rotates so you have a double swivel. You have a top swivel and a bottom swivel. It's almost a boot swivel, but in a different place. Right. And then he has ball jointed ankles. No toes? No toes. So how does it feel? And does he hold the poses? He holds the poses great. Uh, he feels very good. The squeakiness doesn't actually bother me. Like, it's not a concern. It is not. A, he doesn't feel like he's going to break. He feels very sturdy. Um, I think mostly it's just because it, it's the softer plastic rubbing against the harder plastic as you turn it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he feels great. He moves great. 
Uh, as Wilson says, I just had a ton of fun playing with this guy. I just couldn't put him down when I first opened him. Uh, I let my four-year-old or soon-to-be four-year-old son play with him and was not worried at all about him breaking. That's brave. I was worried that he would break pieces off of him but not actually <laughs> break him moving him around. He had a blast. Very pleasantly surprised. I've never played with one of them. I've just seen them. So I was shocked at how well the articulation works and the playability, poseability of him is great. All right, as far as accessories, he does come with quite a bit. Uh, because he is a Ronin Samurai, he comes with uh, whatever type of sword this is. It's a, a short sword. Uh, it has a great sculpt. It has silver blade, unlike certain other McFarlane oh, uh, blades that we've looked at in the mm -hmm. past. This piece is picked out in gold. This piece has some gold and stuff on it. The wrap is black with a wash, or brown with a wash, I should say. Uh, he has the sheath, which is solid brown, but it is a flat brown that 100% matches and goes with the figure. It doesn't look odd or anything. Uh, and this fits in super nice. And it has a storage on his belt slides on and it's not going anywhere I really like that uh, fits in with the motif really well uh, I like that it's a belt loop instead of a tab yeah it seems more secure and it looks nice yeah and uh, and it won't break right he comes with this crazy steampunk blaster which has all kinds of like he's, it doesn't actually move it's got like the flip over firing pin action that looks cool uh, on both sides it's got wood handle all the metal pieces are picked out in silver with some uh, wash on them unlike certain other weapons it does have a hole in the tip looks great and then no Mandalorian would be incomplete without his giant crazy awesome boomstick again it looks very much like his actual rifle uh, but this one again has a steampunk, I don't know, feudal, I don't know, steampunk work for you? Yeah, steampunk. Again, it's got the great metalwork, sculpt, paint job with wash. There's some gold, gold on the eyepieces or scope, uh, trigger, blah, 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 great woodwork and wash on the wood. Uh, the other side has some different symbols and uh, has a peg here and he has a peg in the back and it pegs on just like that. Uh, it comes off the peg mm. and the peg tends to stand it, stay in his back which is not a problem unless you, you don't want I don't know. It, but for some reason, it bothers me. Oh. Like, I would think that the peg should stay in the gun. Or be in the, like, I don't know. I guess one or the other. But, yeah. So, you can peg it. The problem, then, is his cape kind of mm. needs to be posed. So, his cape kind of looks wonky with it there. But, so does the regular one. So that's not a that's not a new issue, right? Yeah, that's a that's a known Mando action figure issue. Yes, and then uh, he comes packaged with left and right fists for Mando fighting action, and then he comes with a plethora of hands: a pointing finger slash rifle hand, a rifle gripping hand. He comes with a sword holding hand he comes with the other side sword holding hand he comes with handgun holding hand he comes with other hand sword holding hand other sword holding hand or gun hand and other hand pointing finger for the rifle so you can basically have him hold the gun or rifle or sword in either side 
or have him punching. They all have the same great paintwork and sculpt as the fighting hands that we showed you. Uh, they pop on and off fairly simply. Take uh, it's just a peg. Pop on. You're done. With the rifle holding hand, uh, the fingers are a harder plastic rather than a softer plastic so I'm not gonna put have him hold the gun yeah but he can do it and he holds it super tight but it is a it is a not an easy fit because of the plastic is so tight it's more of a McFarlane hand than a Marvel Legends where you can easily yeah. move it mm. grip it I but see. he can do it I promise like where's the sword hand here's oh, oh, here's the sword hand see that's a good fit. Yeah. There you go. And for a sense of scale, he is on the taller side for six inch scale figures. Seems like it's somewhere around six and a half. Yeah. Because McFarlane is seven. Right. So we've got Dooku and uh, Parker. Both. Yeah. So at least half a head taller than them. Naturally. Final thoughts. Yeah, final thoughts. I'm going to give him four and a half hammers. Uh, I'll detract for the cape. Uh, I did try off camera to if, if see if there's anything I could do between the cape and the rifle um, as far as posing goes. And there is a shot on the back of the box that I don't think is possible to achieve. I agree. I believe it is a fake or they punched a hole in the cape to get, I don't know. Uh, but he he's beautiful. He's fun to play with. Uh, we haven't talked about price yet. He is $100 yes. and only available through Premium Bandai. I guess of the three of us, I deal with import figures the most often. That is true. And he is taller than most. So uh, the, the Dragon Ball, the... Um, the other Bandai Star Wars figures, stuff like that, mm -hmm. are shorter than he is by probably an inch. And I'm paying sometimes 100 bucks, and he's as good, and now he's taller. Same amount of accessories. So he, he, he's a great figure. If you yeah. like the character, if you like the show, this is, this is fantastic. Highly recommend. Um, the cape is the only, it's really the only downside I see. And um, I think it's it's overlookable, I think. I was looking because I kind of hoped that the cape could be removed, but it looks like it's buried in there, um, sort of like the, the Moff X Batman cape where it's tucked into the yeah, I chest plastic. I, I think they, as they have plugged it in and then they assembled him around it. Yeah, it looks that way. So I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like it would be easily removable. I don't know if anyone's going to try to do even a third-party cape for it. Someone's, someone's going to try. I would try. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would love to see you try. Okay. All right. Uh, so I concur 100% with your uh, review skills. Uh, but I'm going to go five. And I'm going to tell you why. He is the by far the coolest looking Man Mandalorian figure I have. For sure. He is by far the most poseable Mandalorian figure I have. Seems fair. And uh, if it was season three of The Mandalorian, he would be the Mandalorian I would pick up and play with while I watch the show. Makes sense. Longtime viewers, all five of you, uh, remember that I mentioned in our top 10 or our top five toys of when I talked about my Mando being super loose because I played with him every episode. Yes. Uh, this is not going to be my go-to Mando. I don't care that he's taller than the other ones. He wouldn't be fighting them anyway because he, 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 the Hasbro ones look pathetic next to him. Uh, the $100 price point was kind of tough to swallow until I actually got him in hand. And I, I, I just love him. I will figure out a way around the cape. I've been hesitant to punch a hole in it because once you punch a hole in it, 
it can only be in that palace? Yeah. Or only I mean, this is good. So we were talking, um, if you, you could put the cape a certain way, and if you pose him correctly, it, it works. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that I will be able to put some folds in it and kind of get it to get out of the way. Plus, he's not always going to be having the rifle on his back. Sure. So, yeah, I just, I, I highly recommend this guy. He's still available now. I don't know how long. I know some of the older ones are hard to get now. I don't know how long this one is, especially since A, it's the Mandalorian, and B, it's their like, exclusive. Yeah. So, But anyway, I highly recommend if you have the money, if you like the character. It's a great figure. Uh, spoilers, he's going to be in my top five toys of the year, probably. It's still early. Every time we always say that. Probably, but, though. But I, I don't know of any toys coming down the pipeline that can vest him off the top of my head so yeah there you go like subscribe thanks for reviewing thanks yeah. for hanging out that's been it for this episode all of the social media stuff is in the show notes yeah like and subscribe yeah um, and uh, until Wilson and I can be in the same room again uh <laughs>